Hey guys, today we're going to be talking about virtual reality. Well, in this case, 360 video. I'm going to be talking about a piece I made four years ago about the Iron Giant. At the time, I originally made it for the Gear VR. It's a mobile VR platform and it uses the Samsung S6 and I think also uses S7 um, in the later models and the S8 and all that jazz. Um, originally, when uh, this came out, uh, the pipelines were much harder than they are today. So I'm gonna go a little bit in how I had to create, or the process that had led me to create this 360 video. Uh, originally, I had deployed this as an APK, which is basically an app for uh, the phone rather than a 360 video. At the time, it was much more difficult to render a 360 video and put it onto VR platforms. As it is today, you can watch it on YouTube, which is probably why you're watching this video. So let's go into cinema and let me talk about my process on how I created that experience. So for the Iron Giant experience, I animated this character in cinema. It was my first character animation. And Cinema is a animation uh, 3D um, tool set uh, that a lot of motion designers use and also other types of animators as well. Uh, this was my first character animation and I ended up using the character module which is under character, character and we'll go into that a little bit as I talk about how I uh, rigged the deer because I had, prior to this I had never rigged or done any of that sort of thing as well. So originally my pipeline was I animated this Iron Giant using uh, this module and then what I ended up doing is I tried to animate the uh, camera. That was a terrible idea because at the time most of VR 360 videos were very linear based. So every keyframe was very linear if you did something and it was not like where something would have easy ease or easy out where it mean it goes fast. Basically it's not consistent those type of keyframes. So I tried to animate everything in Unity. And if you ever use Unity, that's a terrible idea because Unity animation platform is a little bit weaker than other uh, game engines. And also in general, I think that it's better just to exp uh, animate outside of the game engine you're using and bring it into the actual game engine. Unless you're doing motion capture, which I would argue uh, doing it in Unreal is incredible. So. What I ended up doing is you can see this cube in this um, video that I have um, that I'm displaying now. And so basically what I did is I made a keyframe for each keyframe uh, for when you were going up. And then what I would have to do is there, there was no natural previewers back in the day. So what I would do is I would deploy to this, watch the keyframe, and then I'd be like, okay, that one's good. And then I'd have to go back and forth. I also did the same pipeline with um, uh, what was it? It was the Unity when I animated the Unity cam uh, camera. So that was also many hours wasted doing that and I eventually came up with the pipeline of using the square like I said. So let's go into how I ended up rigging the quadruped. So this is the deer that I originally, uh, this is the deer that you could actually rig. So what you would do is you would go into character, character, and then what you can do is you can basically build it from there and so you would adjust the points and so this is how I rigged the iron giant and the deer so from there you can adjust the points and then basically you're going to eventually bind these points to the vertices of the 3d model and what that does is basically allows you to manipulate uh, the characters and create animation and now I'm going to show you the actual animation for this so you can see all these controllers are on it and it allows for quick easy process if you're trying to get something rough. A lot of my keyframes in uh, cinema were all linear. At the time I was just trying to pump out as much content as I could and I also wanted to be able to demo in front of everyone. So let's talk about how I gave demos to people. So what I originally did was I had created this I had created um, this project in Unity and what I would do is I would deploy onto my phone. At the time, and I think even today, you would need an access code so you could deploy to your own app so it's like a developer preview to allow you to have its signature. It was called an Oculus signature at the time. I'm not sure if they still use that. I um, primarily use the Vive now uh, just because of the motion capture capabilities within that platform. 
which I will be doing later tutorials um, in the next coming weeks, hopefully. Uh, so what I would, uh, so what I did is I basically exported the FBX file, which is one of the main formats that um, 3D engines export out to, and, um, to Unity. And so from there, I had brought in the Iron Giant. And I basically plopped him in a, um, this scene that I uh, created with some assets from the asset store. And then I also worked with a great sound designer named Andrew Luck, who uh, has been doing a lot of different sound design for virtual reality. And we add colliders for the bottom of the feet. And so every time the colliders would hit the terrain, it would make a rumbling sound. He also did bird sounds and all sorts of things as well. But the camera, like I said, I wanted to use this camera movement. So I had to export the cube as an FBX. And from there, it has this thing called a Cinema 4D take. And what I would do is I would drag it to the camera and it would basically drag it to the camera and it would have an animator prefab, which are basically like a component uh, building blocks in Unity. And I would drag it and I basically would just keep changing out the animation to test the, to test the system and how how well it played and how how it felt as an experience. Uh, in general, we evolved this experience to create more of an interactive experience by using uh, the five trackers. So we haven't showed a lot of this, but we basically did full motion capture for the Iron Giant using a five trackers and also another mocap suit called the Perception Neuron. We ended up using the Ikenema one because it was the most reliable. Uh, especially because you, if you're doing real-time performance pieces, it's generally better to just use one system, at least to this point. Um, but we ended up using the Vive Trackers, like I said, and we basically created an experience using scale, and one friend would be the Iron Giant, and the other person would be Hogarth. And basically the object of this was to have this cool interaction with you and your friend in full motion capture and virtual reality. And also we really want to play up the use of scale. There is a trailer on YouTube and it's very rough compared to what we actually accomplished in the end. Uh, we'll be sharing out a lot of that stuff soon, especially um, the real-time motion capture stuff because we're working on an Alzheimer's piece that has real-time motion capture and um, basically it's like a VR improv scene. Well, I hope you enjoyed this deep dive into this Iron Giant 360 experience breakdown. It's much as I would say, it's much easier to create a 360 video experience today versus back then. And it's also very easy now to export your Unity projects as 360, Unity, uh, 360 video experiences. And you know, I hope you guys join the VR army or the metaverse or whatever you would call it, or the augmented reality, mixed reality uh, experience. I can't wait to share with you other projects we're working on and also more tutorials soon. I'll be putting all the assets and everything, everything in the link in description below. I hope you guys live thy dream and go find your meta.